All right. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. We're just going to get people a moment to hop in and, and buckle up, as Barbara was saying earlier. Welcome to Lately Live. Who do we got on? Say hello from where we are. I am in Stone Ridge, New York. I am in York, Atlanta, Georgia. Us. All right. Atlanta. Oops. See, I just did it wrong. I tried to say hello to everybody. I did it from, so don't forget everybody, make sure you check all panelists and attendees when you're saying hello. Like I am trying to do, hey, Scott Freiman, what's happening? I'm so glad to see you guys. Oh yeah, Beth, what's up Beth? We just met on, on uh, LinkedIn, thanks to Barbara. Pretty cool. <laughs> Hi everybody. Barbara, so you are in Atlanta and I you were am. telling me it was, it was like balmy in 80 and but now cold to 40 is that right we have had crazy weather for the past six months i mean more rain than i've seen in the 20 years i've been here uh and we again and it's just like this cycle it's it cycled back up we got really hot and then a lot of pollen not complaining because the pollen been really bad the last two weeks but yeah. i literally got up this morning and i walk out with my dog lily and degrees I'm like holy crap where's my sweater and I had to run back <laughs> <laughs> it's the one thing that you know we can all relate to from wherever we are so um it's good to talk about the weather this is an old sales trick right uh was just kind of warming up our convo hi Carrie hi Nick Chris we got a lot of people here today oh look at you oh, You're Canada, a ringer, it's warm today <laughs> that is right um awesome so we're gonna just dry Drive in and, and dive in. But I feel oh, like there's driving. my gal, Beth. Like driving. Hi, Beth. Good hey, to Beth. see you. What's up, Beth? Cool. Um, all right, everybody. So I am Kate Bradley Chernis, the CEO of Lately. We're so glad that you guys are here. I'm actually on staycation, believe it or not, which I've never done before. Hey, Vicki. Um, it's, it's hard to do, but I'm, I'm out of staycation for this um, experience only. Hey, Ivana and Vicki. Um, because Barbara is is such an incredible human, a talent. Um, her skill set is, thank you, um, needed more now than ever before. And what I want to do today is feel free, as always, to ask as many questions and make comments as you want in the chat. Um, but to to really um, talk about now, what's happening now, right? Like life is a little interesting for all of us, that's for sure. Um, but also life goes on at the same time, right? And that does mean sales happens. Um, so we're going to talk about, you know, how to how to approach that in the now. So let me do a quick intro of Barbara, and then I will try to shut up and let her take the stand here. So um, Barbara is Giamanco, is that right? Am I saying your name right? Giamanco. Giamanco. I am terrible <laughs> with the Italian accent. <laughs> but I try. And I'm actually <laughs> Irish by birth, and that's a whole different story. There you go. Me too, me too, of course. So so Barbara is a woman in sales advocate slash badass, and she's been helping companies attract more women in their sales ranks and advancing them into leadership roles for ages. She's also the host of a podcast called Conversations with Women in Sales, which is the only podcast dedicated, dedicated to women in selling. Hard to believe that, really. She's also the author of The New Handshake, which is the first book written about social selling, and she's known globally as a top influential leader, a speaker, a blogger, an expert in sales, uh, leadership, social selling, marketing, and business. It's a very long list, and the accolades um, come from all over the world and, and a million different places too long to list. So hi, welcome, and thank you, Barbara. Hello. I'm glad to be here with Kate Lee from Lately. <laughs> so, so let's, let's, we, we promise a no holds barred, like, you know, get right to it and be straight. Let's talk about, um, I mean, should we just be really brutal? Like what should we, what's going on right now that we don't like? Yeah. So here's what I don't like right now. I think we are now past the point of having to educate people that we have a health crisis going on worldwide. In the beginning, it was obviously the thing to do when you were reaching out to people and you were trying to set up new webinars and you're trying to help people get over sort of the concerns that they had. And I got to be honest, I feel like right now we're moving into clickbait territory. Uh, you know, I don't think we need to be leading our sales and marketing messages any longer with, hey, during the Corona, you know, COVID-19 <laughs> crisis, it's like, who doesn't know that's happening? And I think you can yeah. get a little more creative and get away from that. Plus, on the sales side, 
unfortunately, I'm seeing some people using that as sort of a hammer and it smacks of fear and desperation. So stop it. Yeah, I mean, so stop it in the hashtag you've been loving, which I think we should all appropriate as well. Um, one of the things I was saying to my, my social team was like, if I, if I ever see them write the phrase during these uncertain times, I'm going to, you know, punch them in the eyeballs. So Well, and exactly. here's the other thing too, and I don't mean to sound like, um, you hey, know, Karen. unfeeling or uncaring or, or critical. The same with, I hope you're staying safe and healthy. Um, that's really important, but maybe that's not the first sentence you're going to lead with. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting a lot from strangers that lead off with these things and it starts and, and that's worse for your messaging because clearly it's not genuine. You're a stranger. You don't know me. Do you really care if I'm safe and healthy? Because, you know, it leads Kate with, hi, I hope you're staying, you know, safe and healthy. And you're probably working from home for the first time remotely. Well, I'm not. And then they roll into a pitch. And so it's kind of like, that's what we're here to talk about. Pitching is bad anyway, and right now it's even worse because how you, how you conduct yourself right now is going to make a huge difference in your pipeline down the road. So can someone write that in the chat? I want to, I want to quote that. How you conduct yourself right now is going to make a huge difference in your pipeline down the road. Absolutely. And we were just talking about this. Me and Lauren and I were on a podcast with our, our customer and friend, Laura, um, Taylor, right, the other day, and we were, correct me, Lauren, if I'm wrong here, um, we were just talking about this exact thing, and I mean, if you're, if you're human in your marketing, and you're considerate in your marketing from the get-go, in times like these, you don't have to change much, right? No, you, you don't have to change much, but here's, so let me just kind of back it up a little bit and just say that I've been in sales long enough to see these cycles kind of come and go. And so some mm -hmm. of what we're seeing right now is behavior that we saw, unfortunately, 9-11. Let this be a lesson once and for all, folks. Please write this down. You know, where you are right now is indicative of the work you did weeks and months before we got here. And so what happens sometimes is when things seem to be going well, People assume they're just awesome at selling or that they've got great uh, prospects in the pipeline, that they're really moving all the activities forward. And guess what? People woke up one day with a very changed world only to find out they didn't actually have the pipeline they thought they did. So, you know, it's important to always be prospecting, always be staying focused. And then now, so what's happening, people are nervous, they're scared, they're scrambling. And that scrambling is going to have a very negative effect if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I don't want to be too negative, but so we've got some, got a couple don'ts here. The don'ts are essentially stay away from cliches or um, uncaring phrases, not uncaring, but like vapid. I don't know. I don't know how to say it anymore. Um, well, and just, I guess the best way to put it, Kate, is con consider the context. If these are people okay. you already are talking with and you've had relationship with before now, it's completely appropriate to be checking in and saying, hey, how you, is there anything I can do to help you? Um, you know, but, but again, you don't need to keep leading with the virus. But if you haven't had any kind of contact with anybody ever, and now their first impression of you is this sort of uh, desperate, we've got you what you need in this time of crisis, that just sets you up for not doing well going forward. Yeah, it's like a weirdo approaching you on the street a little bit, you know. <laughs> I know right? Yeah, I mean, I, I heard, I don't know if this is true, but I heard that they banned cold calling in, in New York recently. I don't know. Uh, uh, I think yes, actually, that's that. true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, so interesting, right? I mean, you know, part of this talk, just to maybe take it, start taking a little bit away from, from virus land a little bit, is that... So I think that sales get, has been getting a bad rap for a long, long time. Of course, always. you know, of course it has. Always. It always has. Thank you. Um, and people so also separate marketing and sales, which is interesting to me. And uh, marketing has its own bad rap. That bad rap is about not having results and about being some kind of creative thing that only women do in, in some weird room, essentially, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> with no no uh, results or no connection to results. And then, you know, 
so there, we need to link the two. The two are always linked. They must be linked. But now more than ever, as you know, as an expert, they're, they're um, extrin extrin how do you say it? Ex extrinsically linked is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> they're permanently coupled. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my vocab word. Um, and so I'd love for you to talk about, um, you know, a little bit, some of the best practices people can go about using, we call it social selling. That's the, that's the term. Um, I think of it as just selling these days. You probably do as well. Um, let's connect some dots. Like, help me understand sales and marketing and social selling. Maybe define what you think those things are, what we all should think those things are. And then some, some best practice tips that we could go about. Sure. Affecting that now. Cool. So, you know, when I retired from corporate America, I left, I ran a $350 million business at Microsoft. I was really leading a national sales team. And I had this crazy idea to start my own business, to go out and work with sales teams to help them be the best they could be. And, um, and along the way though, I have this passion for technology. And so I got into LinkedIn early and I started really um, getting experience with early social media tools. And so it was about 2006, 2007, Kate, I knew that social was going to have a real impact on selling because at the time people were just talking about how it was going to impact marketing or PR or communication. And I said to myself, if people can use LinkedIn to find a job, they can use it to find sales opportunities. So I started thinking about, wow, how is this all going to kind of come together and lead to the book, The New Handshake Sales Meet Social Media. By the way, I am the original social seller. We wrote about it in the book, started calling it social selling. But the idea was that ultimately I stopped using the term because first of all, you're not selling. And, 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 and secondly, people started talking about it as if it was the only thing that you needed to do to drive revenue and pipeline. And of course it isn't, but right about the same time, we actually wrote about this concept called smarketing, which leads to what you're talking about. I began to really realize that the world that we were moving into the way the world was evolving, sellers needed to learn how to think like marketers and marketers needed to learn how to think like sellers. And that is even more true today than ever before. You, so when we talk about sales and marketing alignment, you know, you, you each camp literally needs to understand how to use, uh, you know, selling strategies in the way that they market, but also salespeople need to learn how to use things like LinkedIn or Twitter or other social media as part of the overall selling strategy. Why? Because buyers ignore us. So phone and email and all of that mm. becomes really, really mm -hmm. tough. <laughs> so virus ignore us. Did you guys catch that, what she said? <laughs> right. And, who's, who's guilty? You know, but they, um, I should say they do, but they don't. They, they do ignore traditional approaches to how you come at them. As a matter of fact, I interviewed a, a, a sales exec last week and you know what he said? He said, Kate, I'm so tired of salespeople trying to crowbar their way into my inbox. Mm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We all feel that. Yeah. So it's more, so here, my people say to me, oh, are you saying don't make calls? Don't make, send email? No, I'm not saying that. But actually my order is I try to connect with execs first on LinkedIn so I start to follow what they're talking about or what they're doing. Uh, I do a little homework on them. Are they sharing content? Are they writing articles? If they are, I'll comment. Uh, or if they're sharing something that I think is relevant for my audience, I'll share it and I'll tag them. If I come across an article or a white paper or something I know is going to be interesting and relevant to them, I'll actually draw them into a LinkedIn conversation using at mention. Now, having said these few little tips, you have to be intentional. It has to be relevant. And you don't just start in with a conversation. I take the hashtag give first approach. Like how can I do something for that exec or their company or their mm, give first. folks? Yeah. Yes. Wait, I'm just taking notes here. I want to make sure nobody misses this gold. It's so good. <laughs> I am giving them some of my secret sauce, but I'm not going to give it all. <laughs> well, I mean, I think these things sound like they seem so obvious. And for years, so many of us were told to do this stuff, but it seemed like superfluous. I'm using a lot of big words today. Um, but now we know that it really is the way that 
sales is done, um, you know, ac- across the board. If it's not, um, it should be. And so I wonder what you think. Um, so what do we do with with this other thing we all know, which is the fu- the cold the cold calling funnel with the FDR and the cold emails and and all that? Do we is there a way to better it or do we table it? What do we do with that? Uh, so the answer to the question is there's a way to better it. Look, I don't I don't like receiving cold calls and I don't like cold calls. Now, for me, my strategy using social or other mechanisms to get on their radar first so they recognize my name, that seems to work really well for me. That being said, I respect that people, their job is on the front lines and their job is to start that conversation and get people to want to meet with them or their their account executives. Where I think it breaks down is there's still this 1990s selling focus on number, 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 when really it's the quality of the message that makes a difference. Um, I'm seeing in one of the comments, uh, I've missed her, uh, Ivana, she says, buyers ignore anyone in anything that doesn't address an immediate need, a want, or a problem. And she is right. And by the way, solving problems is what sales has always been about. Forget Mm. all these newfangled technologies, right? solve a problem and people want to do business with you. So yes, they need to make their calls. What they need to stop doing is pitching product features, talking all about their company. Um, They need to approach it from the point of view of what the buyer cares about. So, uh, so right now, clearly prospecting is an issue coupled with the fact that many SDR BDR teams are now working remote versus being in the office Mm. bullpen. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If there was ever a time for them to get some, uh, you know, learning and development and some skills, if you will, around how to better message, now is the time. You can't just call people and say, uh, you might be working from, you know, home for the first time. We have remote solutions. Well, who cares? They don't know you, (laughs) you know, so you have to find a better way to message. I love the idea. and, And I hope my sales team is taking note, Lauren, Chris, Katie, Louise. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> I'm sure they are. Barbara's been giving us some, some great coaching over the last few months since we've met anyways. Um, so I love the idea of, of getting to know someone before you call them so they recognize your name. That sounds so simple, but, but a, huge, a huge win. Um, you know, we've found we're, we're trying to learn from, from the best as well. Excuse me. So we do a lot of social connection um, also, and it's, it does come natural for some people, but for others, it doesn't. So I was wondering, um, you know, if somebody wants to connect with someone on LinkedIn for the first time, Barbara, what's a, what's some do's and don'ts you might suggest there? Just first time connection. A first time connection. So, well, let's just start at the very basic. Do not pitch somebody in a LinkedIn connection invite. <laughs> eh. That's an automatic delete for pretty much everybody. Second, do personalize your invitation, but don't personalize with the following. And if you want more details, I'm not shy. It's on my LinkedIn profile. You'll see posts I've written about it. You know, when people say things like, LinkedIn suggested we connect. I'm like, really? So what? Um, Oh, I'm looking to expand my network with like-minded people. Again, so what? not trying to be rude. If you really want to connect with someone else, give them a good reason for them to understand how the connection is going to be a benefit for both of you. So I go back to kind of my give first. If I'm trying to connect with you, Kate, as an executive, you know, I might reach out to you and say, uh, I heard about your company and how lately has this auto generator. And then I read this ar- other article about artificial intelligence. What do you think about it? Would you mind connecting to talk about it? Now, can yeah. I guarantee 100% you're going to say yes or talk to me? No, but there's a very high likelihood you will. Why? Because I demonstrated I know a little bit about you and I'm asking your opinion on kind of the future of AI, which is obviously at the heart of Lately's product, right? So it yeah. connects. Um, and so I think what people <clears throat> do is they need to, whether it's the phone or the email, or some people are saying texting, I don't fully agree with that, but 
social media is not a shortcut. You still have to put effort into some of the things that you do. But I think if people will get out of worrying about what they can get and then try to give something first, you will find that the number of people who want to connect with you and help you and support you and then ultimately do business with you, it just skyrockets. It really does. I mean, I've been doing it for it's true since 2006. I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. Yes. I mean, it's so true. And all those things that you said, like I have gotten some um, intros like that. And I find that, I mean, there's a couple of other things that are happening there, which is number one, I suddenly trust you because you clearly took more than the average time. You're not just mentioning my company. Like you actually obviously know more about it. And then when you're, when you ask me a question like that, I feel guilty if I don't respond because I'm like, oh, this person did some work. If I just ignore them, I'm kind of a jerk, which is a great tactic, frankly, right? <laughs> well, so, and here's yeah. the thing, and I'm seeing something, but I might have missed part of the message in the chat. Um, here's the other thing. You hear two things, right, about personalization. Personalization personalization at scale is not a spam email in the middle with a like, hi, Barb, I listen to your podcast, but clearly they never did. And then, you know, hey, can we meet? Okay, here's a link to my calendar. That's not personalization at scale. Um, on the other side, people think that you can't personalize at scale and actually you can. So I'm going to share my strategy here. Anybody I ever want to work with, I batch them into roles. So it might be chief marketing officer. It might be chief sales officer. Okay. And then I'm going to batch them into industry. So it might be telecommunications and financial services over here. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to quickly mm -hmm. investigate in those two industries, what are one to three insights I can glean? Like, are there challenges or opportunities? And then I look at the roles inside those industries. What's common about those roles, whether it's a chief marketing officer in financial services or tech. I take that information, I come up with a paragraph. I happen to use HubSpot, you can do it in Salesforce, any CRM. And I come up with a paragraph and then I, ha I batch that, right? So that when I make sure. all the calls or all the outreach, it's to one specific role and in industry. You do that at the beginning of the week, you are set for the whole week. And all you have to do then is go in and look at LinkedIn or current news and see if there isn't anything you can then tag on to really personalize. But again, personal means personal. People say to me, oh, I love your book. And I'll, oh, because I like to mess with people. Oh, what do you love about the book? <laughs> what do you love about the I book? You. It's like crickets. Well, okay, you didn't read the abstract. So that's like discussing. <laughs> Or they'll be like, oh, I love your podcast. Really? What episode did you listen to? What, you know, what you like about? <laughs> right? So you can personalize. It takes some work. So I always say a good strategy is either, um, either close it out on a Friday or try to do it like early on a Sunday morning so you don't family too much. But bottom line is if you go in with it kind of planned out, then it makes it super easy. I can crank out. 15, 20 messages in a day, but they're the right message to the right people. And I don't care if mm. I reach 200 people, but I care if I reach, you know, 75 or hundred of the right people. Yeah. So this is interesting because of course, as a startup entrepreneur, I have a lot of advice coming my way from a, a lot of investors, some sure. of which have done business, have had a business themselves and maybe some not. Um, and there's a lot of old school thinking, frankly, I, I believe I now and more than ever, I know it's old school because we're proving it differently with our own software. Um, but this idea that, so a couple things, folks. So, so the personalization means actual personalization, um, but it's a combination of that with the automation that, that can make it scale, right? So yes. you, you can't just scale as a robot alone and like push a button and expect the, ma you know, the magic to happen. Like that's what everybody wants. Yeah. They don't want to do any work. Like it requires human work. Am I right? Yeah. Can we just like put that out there again? Is selling is hard work, my friends. I've been at it for it's a long, work. long time and I've been pretty successful. You know, yes, I've lost deals like everybody else, but anybody who thinks sales is easy is sorely mistaken. And it does take effort and it doesn't really matter which medium. But you know, we have one of the best computers on the planet. It's right here. It's our brain. If we would just step back a little bit and think about 
what is important to somebody who's in an executive or a decision-making position and start thinking now to be fair i understand a lot of this rests on management kate managers need to get out of just telling people to make more dials i'm sorry but that isn't going to be the only I thing it takes i was just going to ask that like so do you think the phrase it's a numbers game is true anymore um only if it's coupled with quality messaging Right. 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 So, I mean, you know, I have proven this over and over in my own campaigns and campaigns with customers backing off, worrying about, am I making enough dials and zeroing in on, okay, how many of the do you need to make? Because I don't care how many people you call or email, but if I'm your, what I do care about is how much of that activity converted to a sales conversation that converts to the next steps in the process and then closes the business. You know, I just chuckle, Kate, when I see all this marketing stuff, all the, you know, the seven subject lines that'll get your email opened. Again, yeah. don't care if you open it. I care if you talk to me. Now. <laughs> and it's tough because we've all felt, um, fell victim to that because there's the fear of the blank page, of course, which we talk a lot, but like when you're starting, you're, you're trying to look for best practices and Google them and there's all this, old information, by the way, that it's been used to death. Like everybody has used that best subject line ever, <laughs> right? A million times. Um, and so, so trying to think about how to, how to upend the system is something I, I mean, I just love by nature. I'm always trying to think that way in everything I do. Um, and, and one of these things, by the way, and, and we, I want to answer, um, we've got a great question here from Andrew that I wanted to share is, um, so my husband is in sales as well. And I, I listen to him. He's downstairs all the time. I can hear, hear him selling. And he's a very chill, relaxed person. And he just, he just sells by, by being chill and being a, a true team player and, and handing off relationships. That's, that's all he does is hand off relationships. Um, but, but he's, he's always the tops, which is amazing to me. Um, it's seemingly without even trying, right? Well, because, you know, my guess is he probably does like I do in this shop. First of all, when you think about prospecting, people make it too complicated, Kate. You're just trying to get the meeting. You're not trying to boil the ocean here yet, right? So oh, my God, that's so big. Timing and, and all of that, right? So stop trying to give them the kitchen sink. Just demonstrate enough value that they agree to give you time on the calendar. That right there is uh, money. And you know, when I get time with somebody and I book 30 minutes, I spend 25 minutes making sure we're talking only about them. My guess is you. your husband takes a very similar approach because yeah. even if somebody right at the beginning says, tell me a little bit about your services and what they cost, I say, you know, we don't know enough about each other. I don't know enough about your business. I have some things I wanna talk with you about based on research, but let's hold that until later. And salespeople are sometimes shocked with that. But, you know, the more you get to know them, usually by the 25-minute mark, they're already saying, well, if we work together, could we do this? Could we do that? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We can. We, we, we. <laughs> it's true. And, I, you know, I think that's something we can do a better job of lately, team, by the way. And that's a really good reminder is to – you know, we all get overwhelmed with our daily tasks. And even I'm guilty of this is not getting to know the customer well enough before the call. Or and sometimes I'm just pulling it out of my ass, right? Honestly, because I'm flying from <laughs> one meeting to the next. <laughs> and um, sometimes I can get away with that. <laughs> that's one of the reasons why I have my calendar set. So I have a 15 minute buffer on each side. If for no other reason than to take a breath and get present for the next reset. Of course, I always do some, uh, I always do some homework um, uh, ahead of time. But I think, you know, and somebody made a comment, it's my friend Beth who made a comment about my directness and honesty. And, you know, that's who I am. And listen, people are not stupid. They know we have something to sell. So come on. Yeah. Um, you know what I've been using for the past week to make sure. So I let things quiet a little, but what I've been using is I've been reaching back out to sales leaders, checking in to say hello. My first line says, Guaranteed, I'm not going to be a priority, but when you come up for air, let's just reconnect. I want oh, to see how you are. That's so good. And guess what? They're responding like almost immediately. First of all, they do yeah. know me, but the point is, I'm just stating the obvious. <laughs> you know, I'm not a priority, but I will be because yeah. I'm staying in touch. So, 
Lauren, Chris, Luis, there's, we, we got a list we can go down with that stuff, the, some of the biggies, so I hope you guys are. Um, and you just kind of answered Andrew's question. I know we got to go here, guys, but this is, I mean, this is so good. So I want to um, answer this. He was asking for, if you have the top three topics um, you would recommend uh, if you want to break the ice, maybe, maybe one or two topics mm -hmm. or icebreakers. Well, it, it depends. It depends on who I'm targeting. So let's just use an easy answer. Sales VP. Okay. What's the top challenge they're facing right now? Probably workers who've working from home and they've never really managed that way before to they got to get the prospecting under control. So, you know, what I look for interesting articles that could be useful or educational, or I even look for to perhaps connect them to other sales leaders because never underestimate the power of putting peers together, right? You benefit from that ultimately. Um, but I would say, Andrew, if you have something specific, reach out to me be, because you have to go by the role, you have to go by the industry for sort of current uh, challenges or problems or even business opportunities they hadn't really thought about. If you try to go too general, then people feel that and that's where that personalization becomes a problem because it's not personal. It's true. Yeah. I mean, one thing I, I, and this is my, someone actually test was touching on this here, but they were talking about a personality versus, you know, not now I am an a personality, so I'm okay with putting stuff out there. But um, for me, if I reach out to somebody cold, um, sometimes by just using some of my own vernacular, like I'm sure you guys have seen this, holy hot peanut butter sandwiches, you know, some of my weird. Holy <laughs> jalapeno. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like that kind of stuff. It gets a reaction because it gets to be, you know, people just don't expect it kind of things. And, and not everybody is comfortable doing that. But, um, you know, that is another, another tactic. I just want to say, Barbara, that like, um, and I haven't said this before, I would really like to have you back soon for Lately oh, Live you. because, yeah, I mean, if we can work that out, um, because I feel like um, this has been the most useful for me. Thank you. Personally. That's so nice. Yeah, I really do mean that. Um, also, because I feel like I get to coach my team live at the same time. <laughs> They're all here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think what it is is. I'm not really sure if it's because managers are telling them not to or people are you know, it's okay to state the obvious. If you're making cold calls, it's okay to say, you don't know me and you're not expecting my call. Then quickly a sentence, here's a problem I want to talk with you about. Could we talk later or whatever? But, you know, people go into this, I'm so-and-so with such and such. And when it was like, nobody cares. So let me leave your, your audience, Kate, with a book recommendation. It is one Great. of the best books I read last year and it's called, You've Got Eight seconds. You've got eight seconds. We don't have 30 seconds to capture attention. We don't have 20. We have eight. And that applies whether it's email or phone or speaking on the stage. You need to find a way to quickly connect with people and then cut all the other junk out because mm. they, they know you're a salesperson. So stop acting like you got to pretend like you're not. It's okay. <laughs> Eight seconds. Um, yeah, You've my team is putting seconds. the link up. It's huge. Um, we should all read that. Um, I, I really, I'm, my brain is worrying about how we can do this more because I feel like not only now, but um, I feel like this kind of idea of, of melding sales and marketing and doing it in a way where we have your expertise and directness is something that is really valuable to people. So um I'm going to email you afterwards and figure out how we can do this more often. And um, I just want to say thank you. Well, thanks for having me here and let me share some things with people. Listen, I know, I know mm -hmm. things are challenging, but guess what? At, what goes down comes right back up. So stay focused, right? Stay positive. Look for the opportunities where they exist and don't pay attention to, you know, the problems, right? When you're on the mm -hmm. clock, stay focused, stay positive. That is, that is lasting advice for anybody who's in sales longer than a year. Trust me on that. So glad I could That's be huge. here with the group and thanks for inviting me. Thank you. And where can we find you online if we need to, if anybody wants to? Uh, well, first of all, you could Google Barbara Giamanco. I'm, I happen to be the only one in the world. Thank you, ex-husband, for that. Remember I said I was Irish. Maiden name is Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would have ever found me, but Barbara Giamanco. And then, of course, love to have you connect with me on LinkedIn and let me know how I can help and support you because one of the things I really do walk my talk and I do like to help and I will give first. 
And, you know, if we cross the line into free coaching and consulting, we'll chat. But otherwise, let me know how I can help you. She means it, guys. So there's a link in, in our chat room. And, and thanks, everybody. Love you. Take care. Bye. Hugs. Okay. Bye.